In 2019, the JV Sports Show podcast began with the idea of spotlighting young people in our community. In time, that podcast evolved into radio, television, and live stream, and through that evolution, new ideas have enhanced delivery, giving a stage to students both in front of and behind the microphone in Arizona and beyond. Thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 educational organization. Hey, this is Sophie, and you're listening to my dad, Vince. Dad, you owe me 20 bucks now. Hi, kids. This is DJ Soul Man from the Funk Junkies, and you're listening to the Varsity Sports Show with my man, Vince Delisio. And what's, what's your last name? <laughs> it's it's yeah. Delisio. Okay, that's right. That's yeah, what I thought. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. AM 1060 KDUS Tempe Phoenix and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale Phoenix. This program is paid for by the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization and its partners. You're listening to the Varsity Sports Show, home of Arizona's youth, high school, college sports, and you, empowering education and enabling dreams, right here on KDUS AM 1060 in Arizona. And now, welcome to the Varsity Sports Show. Good morning. What we have in mind is breakfast in bed for 400,000. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona and nationally. We are, my name is Vince Delicio. We are live from Sun Devil Stadium for Pat's Run, the 20th edition of Pat's Run. We are uh, in the southwest corner of the stadium in the breezeway. Uh, it's a nice shaded area. It's beautiful here. Ran into some old friends about... Uh, it was a little bit of an exaggeration from Mr. Robert Plant, and it's not 400,000 of our closest friends. We're at about 30,000 people here this morning. I am joined by a couple of our amazing broadcast team members. We have with us Kobe Bronstein and Alex Medina. Kobe, Alex, how's it going? I'll go first. I'm absolutely stoked to be here. This scene is incredible. 30,000 racers. Congratulations to the Pat Tillman Foundation on their growth over the last 20 years. Alex, a little bit of drama when we got here. We got cleared. We got okay. Security, apparently, we looked a little sh shifty when we got here, but uh, it ended up being okay. Uh, aside from that, how's it going? It's going good, Vince. We're so happy to be here today at Mountain America Stadium here in Tempe, Arizona for the Pat Tillman Run. It's a big day here in Arizona. Thousands came from everywhere, Arizona, all over the country, and it's been an awesome day. I, I am just thrilled. I'm excited because of the fact that, that it's, you know, they say you can't go home again, but this, this is home for me. I grew up here. I used to ride my bike by here as a kid when, back when there was no water in, in Rio Salado. And, uh, and, and then having grown up in the area and, and working here at the university, uh, it, and, and which was our, during a very special era. I talk about this constantly, almost 30 years ago, uh, part of, of the, the, the era of the last, uh, what was the Pac-10 turned into the Pac-12. Now that'll be going away, but uh, being Pac-10 champions and, and having that brotherhood, that fraternity with, with people that, that are, are going to be enshrined as part of that team forever. We ran into a couple of them this morning. Uh, uh, Darren Ransom, who was a, a fullback back uh, in that era. We ran into Steve Campbell. Steve Campbell, of course, as you know, is the head football coach at Williamsfield High School, but he was a quarterback for us back then. Uh, great, great people. It was good seeing him. Um, and it's just been an amazing day. We're here, and, and it, I, no lie, there are all of, if not more than 30,000 people here. There's a, just a sea of maroon and gold. The Tillman jerseys, the, the, the number 42 is, is plastered, emblazoned everywhere. Uh, as, as we had a chance to walk around, we saw you know, people that, that um, are here for a common cause. And when you hear the word, the words, Pat, Pat's Run or Pat Tillman Foundation, Alex, I'll start with you. Uh, what does that mean to you? 
Yeah, it's huge, Vince. People know who he is around the world. And this is a day and every day that people take the chance to honor him and uh, give recogni recognition to Pat Tillman um, for what he did for this country. And it's a yep. huge day here in Arizona. Uh, Kobe, and, and thank you for summing it up. And you had a chance to kind of talk with a few people. We recorded a couple interviews, put them up on social media. What's the common theme that you got from hearing these people that and telling why they're here? I think the common thing is togetherness and unity because everybody's here for the same reason, honoring the same man, an incredible guy who put his NFL career on hold in order to serve the country following the 9-11 terrorist attacks. So he served in Afghanistan. And again, going back to your question, a lot of unity and togetherness, everyone have, having the same goal, honoring the same man, racing 4.2 miles for the guy that wore number 42 for Arizona State and the Arizona Cardinals in the NFL. You know, it truly is, it, it's sincere when we say that people are here to be together. And, and you know, you hear, you turn on, and I'm, I'm not going to get political, um, but you, you know, CNN, Fox, MSNBC, whatever, they're always showing bad stuff going on in this country. And this is truly an event that brings people together. And, and while we think of Pat Tillman, you know, there's a handful of us that, that knew Pat very well. And he was a guy, he was just a guy. He was a guy, he was a consummate teammate. He was a special person. Um, he, he, he was a, a classic story, a classic overachiever. And, uh, but the cause is much bigger than just the name. And, and it's about leadership, it's about selflessness, it's about togetherness and coming together and helping humanity. And that's what this is. And I mean, I, you know, I don't want to sound all philosophical or anything, but, but it's about being together on a Saturday morning, coming together, and not just getting out here and sweating and walking and running or whatever you're doing. Um, it's about a common cause and about charity and about doing something for your fellow man or woman or person, okay? Now, today we got an incredible show. Our amazing team, including you guys, you got incredible content, incredible interviews. We've got guests that we normally feature. Don't go anywhere, guys. Um, we're going to start off with our Southwest report, Sammy Califf, Alex Shulman, and Jonathan Melendez. Aaron, take it away. The Southwest report. Greetings, readers. This is Sammy Califf with the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication at Arizona State University reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. Today's story will dissect something a little different. The Volcano Vista High School men's basketball team in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Volcano Vista is the number one ranked team in the state, according to MaxPreps.com. They are also ranked number 48 nationally. Volcano Vista had a near-perfect record this season, winning 30 games and only losing one. They easily won their division, going 8-0 in district play ahead of rivals Cleveland High School in Rio Rancho and Atrisco Heritage Academy in Albuquerque. They also placed first in New Mexico's Class 5A standings over Oregon Mountain High School in Las Cruces and Santa Fe High School. The team's only loss of the season was against Cleveland in December. After that, the team went on a 20-game winning streak. The team would win state, defeating Oregon Mountain 47-34 to win their third consecutive Class 5A state championship. Guided by head coach Greg Brown, the team has seen repeated success throughout his tenure, going 88-4 and since the 2021 season. I recently spoke to Volcano Vista assistant coach Cesar Cuevas about the team's success and how far they've come. I think the things that have helped us build that camaraderie are our uh, leadership from uh, Hudson Brown, uh, Kenyon Awino, and Ryan Gonzalez, who uh, are three guys that have played together for several years, and so they've established that uh, that connection as as a as a trio, and and has as a has filtered into the other guys, and so those guys being like the head of our team has has been really important for us. And ladies and gentlemen, that was. Volcano Vista assistant coach Cesar Cuevas. Obviously, he provided a lot of great insight to his team. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all for today's story. Once again, this is Sammy Califf with the Walter Cronkite School for the Varsity Sports Show, signing off. Hey. Good morning. I'm Alex Schulman with the University of Arizona, bringing you your rodeo report. The San Angelo Rodeo is the last of the Texas Swing Rodeos and will crown their champion on April 19th. But until then, we have several performances leading up to the championship round. The second set of performances are to start April 11th and end April 14th. 
Going into the second half of San Angelo, several athletes have made their way to the top of the aggregate. Donna K. Rule sits at the top of the barrel racing with a 30.25 seconds on two head aboard 2019 Horse of the Year High Valor. Ashley Castleberry is right behind her with a 30.54. In the saddle bronc riding, Lefty Holman is leading it with 87 points on California Kiss from Pete Car Rodeo. In the bareback riding, Cooper Cook is on top right now after an 88 and a half point ride on Corco Rodeo's Buffalo Soldier. In the bull riding, J.R. Stratford made a 90 point ride on Pete Carr Pro Rodeo's Bruised Kitty. Marty Yates is leading the tie down with a 15.5 seconds on two. And in the team roping, James Arivoso and Junior Gonzalez lead the aggregate with an 8.7 on two. In the steer wrestling, Matt Reeves is leading it with an average of 8.4 seconds. The total payout for San Angelo is over $650,000. I'm Alex Schulman reporting with the Varsity Sports Show. Hello everybody, this is Jonathan from Arizona State University and for this week's segment, we're gonna talk about how CJ Stroud was able to revamp the Texans franchise. To tell the story of the Texans, we need to take it back a couple years. The year's 2019, the Texans came off a 10-6 season, their sixth under head coach Bill O'Brien, and they managed to clinch the AFC South once again and prepare for the wild card against the Buffalo Bills. And what looked like it would be an embarrassing ending to the season, the Texans make a miraculous comeback and score 19 in the fourth quarter against the Josh Allen-led Bills and send it to overtime. Here, they would inevitably complete the comeback and move on to the divisional round. However, this marked the last time the Texans would see success as they choke a 24-0 lead to the Patrick Mahomes-led Chiefs and end up losing 51-31. Following this heartbreaking loss, the Texans fell into a downward spiral that began with them sending star-wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins to the AZ Cardinals in what would go down as one of the worst trades in NFL history. Over the course of the 2020 season, all the way to 2022, the Texans would endure three years of misery, winning just four games in 2020 and 2021, and three games in the 2020 season. When all hope seemed lost, the Texans ended up with the second overall pick of the 2023 draft and made the most important decision in the franchise history, drafting CJ Stroud. Stroud was a star at Ohio State. He finished his last year as a finalist for the Heisman and Conference Offensive Player of the Year, coming off a year where he threw for 3,688 yards, 41 touchdowns, and 6 interceptions. The Texans needed a QB to step in and make an immediate impact, something that rarely happens with first-year quarterbacks. In just his first season, Stroud was not able to not only lead the Texans to a winning record, but also to the franchise's first playoff appearance in three years. Stroud led the franchise to the top of the AFC South, and they became the fifth team in NFL history to make playoffs with both a rookie quarterback and a rookie head coach. Despite low expectations, the Texans blew past the Cleveland Browns in the wildcard round in a 45-14 win and eventually lost to the one seed Baltimore Ravens. In just one year, Stroud led a team with no expectations to the top of the AFC South and a playoff win against what was thought to be one of the best defenses in the league. This has been Jonathan Melendez for Arizona State University. Thank you for listening. The Southwest Report. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show, AM 1060 KDUS Arizona and nationally on our live stream link. We are joined by race participant Adria. Adria, we just grabbed you, obviously. <laughs> this wasn't pre planned so thanks for coming on over. How did it feel doing Pat's run? Uh, this is my first run. Okay. And I feel amazing. I think it's a good cause, and I, I came from New Mexico to do this run. Me too. I'm from Albuquerque. Oh, nice. Me too. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so what does this race mean to you? How come you guys came all the way from New Mexico to participate in it? Well, my brother's been doing it for about five years, and he, got, he told us about it, and I know who Pat Timlin was, and I have like the utmost respect for any military. And I think it's a good cause, so I was like, sure, why not? Awesome. And that's been the common theme today. Adrian, yes. thank you so much for thank joining you. us, for coming over here on the Varsity Sports Show. Guys, when we come back from the break, we're going to be joined by Thunderbird baseball coach Mike Jacobs, our regular segment. He's been having a, a, putting together a great team this year, a little bit of a, an up-and-down season. He'll talk more about it when we come back here on the Varsity Sports Show. Vince, Kobe, and Alex from Pat's Run here in the south end zone of Sun Devils, well, Mountain America Stadium now. We'll be right back. Go Varsity.
Hey, Phoenix, Doug Gottlieb here. I'm bringing the best sports talk weekdays to you, 1 to 3 p.m., right here on KDUS AM 1060. APAC is your one-stop source for all your automotive and heavy-duty air conditioning parts, supplies, and equipment. They're family-owned and have been the Valley's go-to for all your auto AC needs since 1982. Whether it's for your everyday or vintage car, commercial, or off-road vehicle or equipment, APAC has you covered. Call APAC, A P A K, the AC experts at 602-254-1116 and ask for the Varsity Special to get 10% off your purchase. Training Better Athletes was founded by renowned football coach Ron Sowers with the philosophy of training well-rounded young people in mind and body. TBA is the go-to for middle schoolers through the pros. Coach Sowers has worked with all sports but specializes in football offensive and defensive line skills training. Whether it's one-on-one or group training, reach out to Coach Sowers at trainingbetterathletes.com or call him at 602-435-9064. You can't cheat the grind. Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Catch the Doug Gottlieb Show weekdays from 1 to 3 p.m. right here on KDUS AM 1060 and online at KDUS1060.com. Tighten up with Thunderbird Titans baseball on Varsity Sports Show AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. And now, here's Titans coach Mike Jacobs. How are you doing today, coach? Hey guys, good morning. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. We're here at Mountain America Stadium here in Tempe, Arizona. I know that you grew up in Arizona. Um, what does this race mean to you? Oh man, the Pat Tillman race is uh, everybody I think not only from Arizona as a local, but all over the United States. It's uh, just something that, that honors him, but also uh, brings attention to our veterans and other causes. So. It's fantastic. My grandfather was actually the uh, original Sparky at ASU um, wow. way, way back in the day, Richard Jacobs. Wow. Coach Jacobs, this is Kobe Bronstein from the Varsity Sports Show. Let's talk some baseball. You guys had three games this week, a 1-1-1 one, one, one overall record on the week. I want to go back to the Deer Valley game on April 10th. What was it like from your vantage point at the bench in that back-and-forth game that ended up in a tie? So, yeah, it, it currently is ended in a tie. We actually are picking up and resuming that game uh, April 16th. So we're going to get back on the bus. We're going to drive over to Deer Valley for uh, what we hope will be one inning of baseball, score a run in the top of the tent, shut them down there, and then uh, get back on the bus with a win. So uh, we, we actually have to go back and resume that. But uh, to, your, to your question, it was definitely uh, high anxiety uh, back and forth. We took the lead there. Uh, six three and just like you would draw it up as a hitter you got the bottom of the seventh it's you know bases loaded full count and and their pitcher or excuse me their hitter uh, just put a good swing on the ball and, and tied up the ball game but we, we played a couple extra innings uh, we'll get back to that next week hey coach Noah Anderson has been a dominant player for Thunderbird how has he contributed to the team this season and just the team environment Oh, yeah, we're fortunate to have a couple of really great leaders, Noah Anderson being there, followed up with Chase Benson, who's been great on the mound. Uh, Noah, Noah's uh, had a rough patch a little bit this year. He wasn't able to pitch at all. Uh, we've, we've been getting him a couple of bullpens lately, but he, he made a transition that we needed him to make to first base. Uh, he's played extremely well. He swings the bat well. Um, and it just really, I think, went to show his athleticism, but his – uh, his team leadership as well because he'll do whatever he needs to do for the team uh, to help them win and, and his move to first base definitely has been been helpful for us coach the remaining games on your schedule are all against 4a skyline teams teams that you are very familiar with how important is it to capitalize on the home stretch of your season uh, I think moving moving down the stretch here, we, we just got to look to to be uh, in every single game as far as our 
uh, focus and our intent. Uh, we have a tough game traveling down to Yuma on Monday. Uh, Coach Johnson, Nick there, he's done a phenomenal job with his group. So uh, we're going to face another challenge down there. But uh, our, our guys do a, do a good job getting on the road and staying focused. So we're, we're excited for our trip Monday. Awesome, Coach. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Varsity Sports Show, and good luck to you for the remainder of your season. You guys are set to face Yuma High School again next week. Good luck, Coach. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much. That's Coach Mike Jacobs of the Thunderbird Titans, and we're heading into a break on the Varsity Sports Show. Vince Delisio, the host, alongside Alex Medina. I'm Kobe Bronstein. Alex, for Alex, we're going to head into one of her segments. She recapped the NCAA national championship on the women's side between Iowa and South Carolina. We're going to head to a break on the Varsity Sports Show and listen to Alex segment. Good morning. My name is Alexandra Medina, and I am an Arizona State Cronkite sports journalism student. Making it through an entire NCAA season as an undefeated team is not an easy thing to do, but neither is changing the image of a sport. Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes faced off against the South Carolina Gamecocks on Sunday afternoon in the NCAA National Championship with one last goal in mind, to win it all. With a record 18.7 million viewers watching, the Hawkeyes were looking to clinch its first national championship title, and the Gamecocks were looking to make this its third. South Carolina was able to keep its perfect season by making Iowa pay for knocking its team out of the Final Four tournament last year. Don Staley, the head coach of the Gamecocks, led the team to an 87-75 victory. Clark Kellogg, a CBS Sports basketball analyst, had some words about the South Carolina Gamecocks. Dynastic type program under Don Staley. Clark continued to show the world why it was watching her during the biggest game of her career. And in order to win the title, the Gamecocks would need to stop the all-time leading NCAA scorer. During the first quarter, Bree Hall was guarding Clark, but the points kept on coming, forcing Staley to make a change. Raven Johnson came into the game for Bree Hall, becoming Clark's primary defender and biggest challenge. Johnson was able to grasp four turnovers against Clark and only allowed 12 points. Clark managed to score 30 points in the championship game and will be headed to the WNBA draft. Staley and the Gamecocks will be on its way back to South Carolina with some shiny new hardware. For Varsity Sports, I am Alexandra Medina reporting. Hey guys, Vince Delisio here with the uh, Varsity Sports Show, AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. We are out at Sun Devil Stadium. We're in the uh, south end zone in the breezeway, and in nice shade, nice breeze coming through uh, in the southwest corner. And we've been catching some race participants. We have another one with us joining us right now. Her name is very familiar. Her name is Ella Walter Sanchez. She is a senior at Arcadia High School. She's also a member of our broadcast intern team. She'll be enrolling in uh, at uh, Cronkite this fall. She's one of our rising stars. And Ella, it was so cool to kind of see you walking through. You did Pats Run this morning. Yes, yes, I did. I just finished. It's, it's the perfect weather. It's nice to join you guys. <laughs> hey, Ella, so I know that you are from Arizona. What does this race mean to you? Growing up, we hear Pat Tillman a lot. And um, how come you chose to participate in this race? Yeah, de definitely. This run is definitely like a family tradition. I mean, I've been doing it since I, I think it was four or five. I've been doing it every single year. And it's definitely, I mean, it's definitely an Arizona tradition. And I think it brings the community together. I mean, it, there's not really anything that can bring 30,000 people together every single year, quite like Pat Tillman. So I think it's a great, great thing for Arizona. Yeah, Ella, you mentioned 30,000 participants in the race. It's certainly grown leaps and bounds since 20 years ago to when it started. I know you grew up in the Valley area. Did you always want to go to Arizona State? No. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, I feel like growing up in Arizona, you grow prejudiced against Arizona State. But as I've as I've gotten older, I think you kind of you kind of learn to appreciate ASU. And I definitely think that Pat's Run is 
such a big part of ASU, and it shows you how great of a community and how great of a school ASU is. Ella, so you ran the race this morning. Can you tell me a little bit about the environment while you were running or walking through the race? Um, Pat Tillman, this brings a lot of people together, um, especially the Arizona community. How was it out there? Oh yeah, it's definitely all sorts of people. I mean, you see little kids walking and running, you see strollers, even older people or people running in memorial of their own family members that used to run this race. And it's definitely a wide range of people. Um, you see the same people every year or it brings out new people and uh, it's a great community. Ella, you said you've been doing this for a while. What keeps you coming back every year? Um, I definitely think just the tradition and it just feels great to come and run it every single year. I don't know. It, it, there's definitely a feeling around doing Pat Tillman every year. Awesome, Ella. And then um, now, what is this race like? Um, so how, who did you see out there running? Like, um, how was the chemistry out there um, with people that don't even know each other? I definitely think it's a great, I mean, there's not really any bad chemistry or bad bullet out there. I mean, everybody's communicative, you know and it shares the path and shares the leeway. I think it's just all sorts of people. I mean, and you even see, you know, J.J. Watt starts out the race. You have a different celebrity starting out the race every year. You see news anchors. You see, you know, it's, it's everybody in Arizona comes out to celebrate Pat Tillman every year. Yeah, I mean, it's clear the togetherness and unity of everybody in the Valley as well as other people coming from different states across the country to race today for the Pat's race to honor Pat Tillman. I know you have a special person that race with you uh talk a little bit about him <laughs> yeah i i race the race every single year i've been racing it with my grandpa and my mom every single year since i was about five and uh yeah it's a great little tradition between the three of us and definitely will continue until i'm not here anymore <laughs> ella so you said that you've been doing this since you were a little kid how has the crowd grown over the years oh it's definitely grown i mean used to it was a lot smaller and I feel like now it's grown into a way bigger environment with a lot more sponsors, a lot more people. And I feel like it's grown for a tradition for a lot more families and those families have grown and those families have started to have their families come and just great around, all around tradition. So the Pat Tillman race, 4.2 mile race in honor of the number that Pat Tillman wore at ASU as well as the NFL. Are you an avid runner? And if so, was there preparation into today's race for you? <laughs> Um, I'm definitely a runner, but I do like to walk it because my grandpa likes to walk. <laughs> I don't like to leave him stranded. He likes to, he, he encourages me to run it, but I don't like to leave him stranded. Everybody goes at their own pace. Yes. <laughs> awesome, Ella. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to head to a break, and after the break, when we come back, the Saguaro Sabercats baseball coach, Joe Mickey, will be on the line with us. Thanks for having me. Interact with Bob Kemp's poll question on KDUS1060.com. That's KDUS1060.com. And while you're there, check out Bob Kemp's bottom line at KDUS1060.com. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe. With an experience so good, it remains indescribable. With something for every seafood lover. Try one of their amazing custom seafood boils, sandwiches, appetizers, and salads. Angry Crab Shack Tempe is located east of I-10 on Warner Road, 480-674-3847. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe. Come ready to eat. Hello, this is local voiceover model and former Daddy Yankee stunt double, Mario Malibu. Be sure to DM us your questions for Ask Lucas on Twitter. And you are listening to the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KDUS 
Arizona. Hello everyone, my name is Kendall Flynn and I am a junior studying sports journalism with a minor in Spanish at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. I have been in and around sports my whole life and I'm thrilled to show my passion for sports with the Varsity Media Foundation as a social media manager and technical director this spring. Extra Point with local and national topics, betting lines and banter, weekdays 10 to noon on KTUS AM 1060. KTUS1060.com and the KTUS 1060 app. The Varsity Sports Show presents the Sabercat Report with Saguaro High School baseball coach Joe Mickey. And now, here's the Sabercat Report. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show. Vince Delicio, Alex Medina, I'm Kobe Bronstein. We're trying to get a hold of Saguaro baseball head coach Joe Mickey. Their team is absolutely rolling. An 11-game win streak, 20-3 and overall. Good for the number three team in all of Arizona. 7-0, a perfect 4A Desert Sky record. And coming off of another perfect week, Alex, this Sabercats team is rolling, and it seems like nothing can stop them. Yeah, Kobe, they're on fire. They just took down Marcus Deniza 10-0 yesterday. And we're now joined by head coach Joe Mickey of the Saguaro Sabercats. Coach Mickey, how are you doing on this Saturday morning? Oh, it's a beautiful day. Fantastic. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you. We were just getting into your 11-game stretch where you guys are perfect, 20-3 and three overall in the season. It seems like it doesn't matter where, who you guys play, and when you guys play. You guys continue to impose your will. What has been the secret of the success in all of these games throughout the win streak? Uh, really, really just clean energy, good baseball. These guys are playing really hard together. They're playing for each other. Uh, and as a coach, that's what you fight for is uh, just that team camaraderie. Guys rooting really hard to just do their job. And uh, we've had great pitching, really good defense, and uh, our offense has definitely followed too. So it's a really nice combination. We're staying humble with it, but uh, it's been fun to watch, that's for sure. Hey, Coach, this is Alex Medina. Coach, obviously you guys get a lot of recruiters in the stands because of the talent on the team, especially with Cam Caminiti, a top prospect across the nation. How has that added to the team's environment? Oh, it's a great question, Alex. It was an early adjustment for us. I mean, anytime you see that many people, you get maybe some of the nerves, right, of uh, this is what you play for in front of these guys. Uh, I think now that we've kind of settled into it over the course of a couple months, uh, I think it's made us really, really uh, take the next step as a program. Uh, guys are kind of heightening their focus, and uh, they're excited to play on that stage, and, and we're getting to see uh, what that looks like where you're playing in front of an audience of, uh, you know, 100 or so guys who are at the next level. Um, and so, the, you know, it's, a, it's an exciting thing for our program, and our boys have kind of responded the way you hope they would uh, in those types of environments. Coach, you guys have been winning and very consistent throughout the last couple months of the season. How have you seen your team grow from February until now? Uh, I think, honestly, it, it's just buying into uh, to not trying to do more than the situation. You know, we get into it and you want to get back to that final game or we look at the roads down, down in, far, in front of us and uh, they've just grown to the idea of just one day at a time. Uh, that process of let's just take care of what's, where, where our feet are. And uh, it's been fun to watch our practice routines get really heightened and uh, the things that we're hyper-focusing on are just uh, the attention to detail. And as a coach, when you're in that spot, uh, that's when it gets to be really fun because you can really start taking these guys on the next step. So I've seen us just grow in that, not get big picture mindset, but just really be uh, present each day. And, uh, and it's really fun to watch them in practice and it's enjoyable to come to the yard every day. Hey, Coach. Now, I covered a Saguaro game a few weeks back, and there were some paddles in the dugout. Can you tell me a little bit about that and how that fires up the team during the game? Oh, I love it, Alex. Yeah, so I know a movie just came out. It's called Boys in the Boat. Uh, you know, we've had a mantra for the last couple of years, which is row the boat. Uh, and that in an elevator version is just the compass is your direction, the oars are your energy and uh, the people in your boat are who you're bringing with you. And so we, uh, when you watch that movie, if you watch that, it's just understanding uh, that everybody needs to row at the same time with the same energy. And so those oars in our dugout are just reminding us that we're all trying to put forth that type of energy each time we uh, have a pitch going. And if we don't take a pitch off and we're all rowing with the same energy, uh, we're going the same direction. And, and so that's really what the mantra is. Uh, but they've taken it to the next level. They have fun with that. You know, you watch major leaguers with props in the dugouts, and uh, so we've got a couple, and 
uh, it's just fun to watch these guys enjoy that mantra and really buy into uh, being in the boat together. Coach, everybody knows the energy that you bring as a coach to your Sabercats team, but what do the viewers tuning into the Varsity Sports Show n not know about your life as a coach at home in terms of structuring the day-to-day -day lineups for games as well as structuring your practices? No, it's, a, it's, a, it's honestly, it's a, it's a juggle. Um, you know, you're a teacher first, and as a special education teacher, I love getting out to the yard every day. Um, but you just, you're trying to get guys in. You're trying to get guys exposure, put them in right spots to, to be successful. And uh, so it definitely is one that uh, I take home with me. I have my wife at home who's really the coach of our house, and she does a great job giving me the opportunity to be out uh, on the field doing what I love. And, and uh, she knows how much time this requires to be successful. And so I'm very fortunate in that regard. And, uh, but there's a lot of lineup preparation sitting down with our coaching staff and Coach Fortney and Coach Gonzalez and Coach Cody about just what we're going to try to do that day and, and the best guys to be successful in those lineups uh, against certain teams. Now, Coach, we are here at Mountain America Stadium in Tempe, Arizona for the Pat Tillman run. Now, being a coach in Arizona, how does this race, how has it affected you, and, and uh, what are your thoughts on this race? Uh, I love it. I, I think uh, you talk about character counts. That's a big part of our program. Uh, there's probably not a better reflection of that than obviously Pat Tillman. Uh, it's one of those that, you know, it's an iconic figure who was bigger than just the situation. Uh, it was meant more to what our environment is in Arizona, uh, just by his choices and his actions. Uh, and we have to get reminded of that uh, from time to time, just that this is just a game. Um, you know, he played the game of football and gave that up for a bigger cause. Uh, and I try to remind these boys all the time, this is just a, a vehicle to get you to be a difference maker. And so that's what Pat Tillman was, was a difference maker uh, and somebody that I look up to as a reflection of what we try to do with character count. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, uh, Coach Mickey. We are going to head to a break and go into a segment from Jason Goldie, a intern with the Varsity Sports Show. This is Jason Goldie from the Cronkite School of Journalism at ASU, reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. Last fall was the successful and exciting inaugural season of high school girls flag football in Arizona. Now, ASU is joining the flag football craze, announcing in February that ASU Women's Club Flag Football will be debuting in the fall of 2024. The Flag Football Club will be run by club president and founder, Sierra Smith, who will be joined by her twin sister Sophia as vice president and teammate Brianna Quintero as secretary slash treasurer. The team has an experienced and title-winning coaching staff, headed up by Brian Koger, who is also the head coach of the Campo Verde Coyotes girls flag football team out of Gilbert. Koger led the Coyotes to a Division 5A state championship in 2023. Assistant head coach and head of player recruitment for the ASU club team is Rene Elizondo Jr., who brings experience as a talent ID coach for USA Football, the organization that elects and leads the United States national football teams. Elizondo is also the defensive coordinator for the freshman tackle football team at Higley High School, also in Gilbert. Rounding out the coaching squad are Jesse Papp as offensive coordinator, Mike McAgnano as defensive coordinator, and Jordan Anaya as speed and agility coach, all with connections and experience in Arizona flag football. Rosters are currently being built for all who are interested in playing in the electrifying game of women's flag football at ASU. For the Varsity Sports Show, I'm Jason Goldie. What's wrong with me? What's up guys, Ben Munawera here from ASU reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. Today's topic is Desert Vista Baseball. Desert Vista is currently ranked top 20 once again this year and is on the rise. Ever since the hiring of head coach Pat Herrera back in 2021, the program has seen nothing but continued success. Their previous coach, Cody Brasfield, led the team to a 45-44-1 record in his five-year tenure as the Thunder coach. Whereas Herrera in his first three seasons has already fielded a record of 50-30-1, with room to grow as the season isn't over, nor is his tenure. Herrera previously coached at Skyline for eight years and Desert Ridge, leading them to back-to-back -back state championships in 2009 and 2010. So what do we think? Are the Thunder on good hands? I'd like to think so. 
This season, the Thunder are ranked 15th in the Greater Phoenix area and 20th in state rankings. Ever since Herrera took over, he's been able to maintain the historical success the program has had, consistently being a top 50 ranked baseball program in the state dating back to 2007. This season, the Thunder have been dealing with injuries, as many teams do, but Coach Herrera spoke on the next man up mentality, highlighting star senior Brylan Brown. Brown is having an impressive senior campaign with the Thunder in 2024, leading the team in both home runs and hits, with three home runs and 29 hits. In the state, Brown ranks 21st for home runs, and in the 6A Central Division where they play, he ranks first. With only a few games left to go and playoff implications on the line, the Thunder are looking to make some noise in the 6A Conference. I'm Ben Munawera. Thanks for tuning in. Hello, everybody. This is Davis Noble from Grand Canyon University, here to tell y'all about our own GCU men's tennis team. The Lopes have been fighting hard through their season with an overall record of 7-12. Their last regular season game is Friday, April 12th. I am here with Coach Derek to give more insight on their game. Coach, uh, would you mind telling me about the game that's going on this Friday? Yeah, so we have our last conference regular season match against Seattle. Um, we're feeling pretty good. We're pretty tough here at home. And so, yeah, I think it's going to be a good momentum builder going into our conference tournament the following week in Texas. So yeah. we're looking forward to... Uh, you know, we're starting to finally get healthy, and if we can do that and have a good week of preparation, we can definitely win the tournament next mm-hmm. week. And what's your biggest expectation out of your boys this coming Friday to kind of hold you well for the uh, tournament next, yeah. the following week? Yeah, I, uh, I expect our guys to go out there and take care of business on Friday um, and really just kind of, yeah, like I said, build momentum going into the following week. Mm-hmm. So if we can do that. Yeah, we're, we're excited to compete in the tournament. I like that. And is this a home or away match? This is a home match. Awesome. Yeah, and, and it's also senior day, so we have three seniors that we're going to celebrate. So. Yeah, would you mind telling me about those seniors? Yeah, so two of them were grad transfers, actually. That So this is just their one and only year. So one awesome. of them came from North Dakota. He played number one for them and came here. And then we actually have Pablo, who uh, didn't play in the States, but he came from a university in Spain. Yeah. So he's only been here for a year as well. So, okay. um, And then we have Wyatt Anderson, who's been here for, I think, five years. So um, a good mix, but um, we're definitely going to miss those three. And they've been, obviously, unbelievable additions to this program. So, The Lopes will be facing Seattle U, who have an overall record of 3-11. and Not only is it senior day for three amazing players on our team, but Seattle U should also be watching out for players like David Wakesa, who is currently sitting on an eight-win streak. We also wish our boys luck for their conference tournament starting on April 18th. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. Vince Delisio live with Kobe Bronstein and Alex Medina uh, here at uh, Sun Devil Stadium. We are at Pat's Run and we're joined by another special guest, a participant, one of 30,000. We have with us Nora Primiano from Plainville, Illinois, who now lives in Glendale and uh, she moved here two years ago. Nora, is this your first Pats run? This is my second. Your second Pats run. Wow, you moved here and you started competing right away. Right. What was the training regimen like? Did you train for this? Um, my daughter actually works at ASU. Wow. And so we would walk on her lunch hours. Okay. And uh, you could, you, it's okay. It, we're not, we're not the, the, the work police. You could say it was during her work shift that you, that you actually guys Actually, we did it on her lunch hour. She works from oh. home. Oh, okay. So we did okay. it on her lunch All hour. All right, okay. So, okay. Uh, is this your daughter right here? No, no, no. She's Roger somewhere. Oh, 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 that's the daughter. Okay, all right. Um, and, and so tell what does when, Pat Tillman Foundation, Pat's Run, what does that mean to you? I mean, you moved here two years ago, but obviously you're now part of the culture. Um, think of him as a hero. Okay. Um, my family is a Navy family. Wow. Um, my brother was in the Navy. Yeah. I had two nephews. One is retired out of the Navy, and one is currently in the Navy. Awesome. You know, I had an uncle that was in the Navy. He didn't even know how to swim. <laughs> Can you believe that? Yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so Illinois, that's awesome. And and thank you so much for joining us this morning. Is this something you plan on doing this again? Yes. Okay. Good. And you're not even, you didn't even break a sweat. 
Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, okay. You just were standing here and you, you wiped off. Okay, good. All right, guys, when we come back from the break, uh, thank you so much, Nora, and, and thank you, Nora's family, for letting us borrow her for a little. You know, nothing's free. You sit in a chair, you gotta, you, you gotta talk, so you gotta earn your keep. Uh, when we come back from the break, guys, we've got more from our amazing team. We have Mountain View baseball coach Jesus Arzaga here on the Varsity Sports Show. Don't go anywhere. Go Varsity from Pat's Run. Every Monday night, check out Ray Adams as he hosts the Monday Night Golf and Lifestyle Show from 6 to 7 p.m. here on KDUS AM 1060. Hello, sports fans. This is Dick Stockton, and you are listening to Arizona's home of youth, high school, college, and you. The Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060, KDUS, Arizona. Hey, local businesses, join the Varsity Sports Show and promote your business on our weekly radio show and game live streams. We have several options to promote your business affordably and reach our incredible audience. Call, text, or email us anytime if you'd like more information on joining our team. The Varsity Sports Show will work hard to promote your business through our audio and video platforms while also promoting all of our young people. 480-779-9437 or email us at varsitysportshow.com. Hi, hey, this is Coach Bob Green. But I am not busier than a mosquito in a news colony. I'm listening to Vince at the Varsity Sports Show, Arizona's home for youth, high school, college, and you on AM 1060, KDUS, Arizona. Check out KDUS AM 1060 on 100.7 KSLX HD2. That's right, HD Radio on 100.7 channel number two. All right, guys, uh, we've had an amazing partnership with the Mountain View Toro Athletic Department and uh, Athletic Director Joe Goodman, great guy, and Dr. Mike Oliver, the principal over on the campus of Champions on East Brown Road. And joining us on the line is uh, he's a state champion. He's a state champion in another sport in flag football, but uh, his coaching style and philosophy has uh, spilled over uh, to to about every program he's worked with. And he's also the head baseball coach out at Mountain View. Uh, His name is Jesus Arzal. Uh, Coach Arzaga, how are you? And welcome to the show. I'm doing well. Thanks, Vince, for having me on again, man. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Wow, Coach, last time we talked to you, you were ho- hoisting a, uh, a state championship trophy uh, for uh, flag football. Uh, and you transitioned back into baseball. How's the season been going so far? Uh, I think it's been going well, man. We're, um, you know, uh, Joe Goodman and I kind of talk every year and I don't want to call it the rebuilding year, but we do have we're we're really young. We have a a good core of of seniors on the team right now, but uh, our young guys are kind of getting a taste of this uh, high level baseball. So we're trying to grind it out. And I think uh, last time I checked, we're at like 28 in the ranking. So we're trying to push forward here with our last four or five games going and see see if we can pull it off. Well, you're at 500 in region uh, right now, which which puts you solidly at number three uh in your most recent game on thursday night um you, uh, you quite a game uh, defeated uh, crosstown rival dobson uh, by a final score of 12 to 2 and then uh talking a little bit about the player of the game uh your pitcher chase how'd he do yeah chase has been really solid for us all year um he's done it both uh not only on the pitching on the pitching side of things but on the offensive side and defensive side, but he's been, he's been one of our players that has been able to just buy into everything that we've been able to do this year. And he's kind of flex, you know, he's played a little bit of right field, a little bit of shortstop, a little bit of third. Sometimes he plays second, but he's been, he's been one of our guys on the mound and he showed it again uh, on Thursday. 
What what were some takeaways from the Dobson game? Obviously, aside from the final score, you know, big victory there. But some some things that that you felt like you did really well that'll carry you over. Uh, offensively, man, we just have to. That's one thing we just haven't been able to stay consistent with. So, um, you know, I think last last Friday and last Saturday played Alhambra and played Skyline. Had two offensive games. Um, I thought we did well against Westwood earlier in the week. We struggled there on on Wednesday, so just to try to get the bats consistent again. I felt like our I feel like our defense and our pitching has been there all year, um, but uh, unfortunately, in order in order to win games, you got to score some runs. So hopefully, this kind of moves forward going into next week. Speaking of next week, you got three games. Uh, Monday, you're at Skyline. Tuesday. Once again, playing Dobson for a rematch, uh, and then uh, Friday's your senior day against Red Mountain. Uh, w- what can we look forward to regarding Skyline? Yeah, Skyline's uh, Skyline's tough. You know, actually, just uh, uh, after the game on uh, against Dobson, text the coach there at Skyline to see how he did, and they ended up beating Westwood. It's just a crazy game, man. We you know we played really well against Skyline, beat them, and then struggled against Westwood and they're able to beat them. So as you can see, our regions, you know, mix and match, you got to be ready to play. It doesn't, doesn't matter who it is. So Brian Gregory does a really good job over there at Skyline and we're going to prepare uh, for them um, today and, and, and uh, hopefully we're, we're ready to go, but can't sleep on any of the, of the teams in our region, um, including their towards the end against Red Mountain, who's, I think he's, they're ranked, close to the top 10 so if we could squeeze those one out those those will help us out for the powerpoint rankings well you definitely hold hold the fate of the postseason in your own hands and it's going to be a nail-biter finish here coming down the stretch so uh, coach jesus arzaga mountain view toros baseball coach good luck the rest of the way and uh, we look forward to speaking with you again vince thank you again man for supporting mountain view high school and uh it's a pleasure to have you guys Good morning, this is Christopher Estrada of the Varsity Show with your Tempe Report. Coming up this Sunday is the Kite Runner at ASU Gamage. Now, as someone that has read the book, it was a dang good read. Loved it, and I'm pretty certain that the play will measure up to the expectations not only the audience, but also the people that have read the book, including myself. The Kite Runner performs at ASU Gamage from April 9th to 14th. This is the ASU Gamage website for tickets and showtime. That's all for your Tempe Report. This is Chris, and have a great rest of your day. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show, AM 1060, KDUS, Arizona. Vince Delicio with Alex Medina and Kobe Bronstein. We are at Pat's Run in the uh, southwest corner of the stadium in the breezeway where it's nice and breezy and, uh, and shady. That's the big thing. Man, that sun is beaten down and, uh, whew, wow. Uh, it's, it's been quite the morning. We've had a lot of fun uh, out here at, uh, and welcoming guests and participants as they've been walking by. We've been corralling them. We've got a couple open chairs here, so anybody that's tired that wants to sit down in a chair, you're obligated to getting on a headset with us. There's a young family right across from us here uh, and, uh, and some other folks that are walking by. Uh, but uh, So, Alex, Kobe, I mean, we had a chance, obviously, during what we refer to as pregame, but as the race was starting, uh, what were your impressions when you saw all these people here? Alex, starting with you. Yeah, Vince. Now, this is a huge day, not only in Arizona, but across the country. A day that we recognize Pat Tillman for all that he's done uh, for the country. Um, we recognize him every day, but especially today. And just seeing how much people come together in this race and just coming here for a reason and a lot of it is personal Um, i spoke to a woman who lost her grandfather Um, he was a military veteran and she was here running in the race and she said that it reminded her of him so it's a big day um here you know what what's interesting is that i remember in 2004 when we came in and and the old the, the the teams from that era when pat played here got together and the coaching staffs and all that and we all came together here at the stadium and there were conversations already being had we got to do something to honor Pat that was in 2004 and it was among a small group of people then all of a sudden 
and we thought, you know, it's interesting. You want to have a, a, a run, like a 10K, a 5K. What's it going to be? No, 4.2 miles in honor of his jersey number, and it'll end. The finish line will be on the 42. Well, athletic department kind of, you know, at first cringed a little bit because they said, wow, that's a lot of people that are going to be, you know, trampling across the, the turf field, but they did it right. They covered everything up uh, and made it very tasteful and, and in honoring a great person. The race course has changed through the years. It's always been 4.2 miles. They just kind of changed how it was laid out. Um, now it's kind of goes down rural and kind of a U-turn type of thing. But when I did it a few years back, it went around to Curry and back and, and anyway, and, but it still ended up in the stadium like it does today. Um, quite a morning, quite a morning. Kobe, uh, thoughts on, uh, you've never done a Pats run. Wow, and you're a student here. You got to do Pats run. I know, I got to do. You're Pats never up run. that early on Saturday morning, are you? No, I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I'm a sophomore at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication at ASU. But I come from the East Coast. I'm from Connecticut, so yeah. I've heard of Pat Tillman because I've followed football, and yeah. he is a major, major figure of the NFL and recognized as a veteran that had yeah. incredible service representing the country again, putting his football career on hold after the 9-11 attacks. And what a better way to honor him with 4.2 miles of a race here yeah. at Mount America Stadium. Well, we have another participant with us. Sir, what is your name? Maurice Valeriano. Maurice, Maurice Fili Valeri Valeriano. Valeriano. Wow, okay. That's a mouthful. Maurice, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, you're here, and, and you did Pats Run. How many of these have you done? This is the first one. Yeah. You wheeled yourself through. You're in a wheelchair. I got two pushes up the hill, but I yeah. was, I was Oh, so at, you cheated. At, you, a so little bit up the hill. Come on now. That's that not a real. That oh, okay. Was a killer, so, okay. All right. Yeah. You got an excuse. That's fine. You there had somebody. You okay. But you finished. How long did it take you? I didn't look. I didn't look at what You didn't time look at your know. time. Just, Man, that, it, yeah, I've been yeah. that way too. Yeah. yeah. So. How are you feeling though? You came through. You look like you were tired. energized. Yeah. Tired, you know, but I'm yeah. good. You know, it took, took a little wipe out at the, right before the. Oh no. Yeah. The, uh, I didn't realize it was grass underneath yeah. the uh, canopy. So my yeah. tires just you, dug in and flipped me out. But the, you, they you picked need, me up. The other runners you picked need, me up. You need a lawyer? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. No, all right. Hey, you know, not. you have these conversations. We're here for so. fun. Oh, okay. Know, to raise okay. money for all the right. foundation. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Well, good. Well, it's well, it's great. No, it's great that you, yeah. you participated in the event. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Uh, is this guy a friend of yours? Well, we're with the Paralyzed Veterans of America. Oh, so we're perfect. Thank events. you for your service. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Yeah, so. Okay. But yeah, we uh, this is the first time doing it. So Yeah. What's uh, this guy's name? Tell me your name. Chris, per, per, yeah, he's kind of looking at me Chris? like I like because I kind of I, I insulted. I don't. I it was a joke. I didn't insult purposely insult him. It was I joke around a little bit, but you were kind of eyeing me, like giving me like a mad dog kind of stare, like you were gonna you were gonna grab me or something. So. No, no, that's oh. uh, <laughs> that's from working in the prisons for twelve oh, years. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you never know these days. Anyway, uh, well, it was it, it was awesome that you guys could join us this morning. So excited that that this event and and it, in its twentieth year now. Have you done a few of these before? No, that's my first one. Your first one as well. Are you going to be back next year? Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, my thumb's a little tired from holding my joystick, but you know. Yeah. I think I'll, a little icy hot. I'll be all right. Okay. <laughs> all right, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us here on the Varsity Sports Show, guys. When we come back from the break for hour number two, we're going to be joined by Grand Canyon University Club softball coach Lindsey Collins here on the Varsity Sports Show. Don't go anywhere, Vince, Alex, and Kobe. We'll be right back from Pat's Run. Hey listeners, Vince Delisio here from the Varsity Sports Show. We are so excited and honored that you start your weekends off with us. Our team is comprised of very talented high school and college students working toward a future in media. We appreciate your support and any opportunities that we can to promote your teams or businesses will go a long way toward helping us continue supporting our talented team. We are a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization and we use our platform to not only promote all of the great things happening in the world of sports locally and nationally, but also continue to promote and encourage future broadcasters as they grow in this industry. Please consider a tax-deductible donation to the Varsity Media Foundation. To find out more, please email us at info at varsitysportshow.com or check us out on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok at Varsity Sports Show or on Twitter, at Varsity Show. 
Once again, thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now a nationally syndicated program on the Sports Map Radio Network. Thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show, where our mission is to empower education and enable dreams, creating an unmatched platform to showcase talent both in front of and behind the microphone in radio, television, podcast, and live streaming. The Varsity Sports Show, still your home for youth, high school, college, and you in Arizona and beyond. AM 1060 KDUS Tempe Phoenix and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale Phoenix. Do another one, please. And then Mike, if you want to do another one too. Okay. Do one more. Okay. Same, same thing. Just say, it's Bond from Zacatecas. I love the varsity sports show. Or say, I listen to it every Saturday. So, and, and, my, and don't forget to mention Mike Beal with the Beach and with Beal. Mike Beal. Beach and with Beal. Hi, this is Juan from Zacatecas, and I'm listening to Varsity Sport every day. I'm here with Mike, all right? Peace. Peace out! <laughs> <laughs> the Angry Crab Shack in Tempe, with an experience so good it remains indescribable, with something for every seafood lover. Try one of their amazing custom seafood boils, sandwiches, appetizers, and salads. Angry Crab Shack Tempe is located east of I-10 on Warner Road, 480-674-3847. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe. Come ready to eat. APAC is your one-stop source for all your automotive and heavy-duty air conditioning parts, supplies, and equipment. They're family-owned and have been the Valley's go-to for all your auto AC needs since 1982. Whether it's for your everyday or vintage car, commercial, or off-road vehicle or equipment, APAC has you covered. Call APAC, double A, P A K, the AC experts at 602-254-1116 and ask for the Varsity Special to get 10% off your purchase. Hi everyone, my name is Jason Goldie. I'm so excited to be returning to the Varsity Sports Show this semester. As you might know, I have ASD and I love facts, stats, and info. I learned so much last semester and can't wait to dig in and share my enthusiasm for all things sports with all of you. Go Varsity! AM 1060 KDUS Tempe Phoenix and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale Phoenix. This program is paid for by the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization and its partners. You're listening to the Varsity Sports Show, home of Arizona's youth, high school, college sports, and you, empowering education and enabling dreams, right here on KDUS AM 1060 in Arizona. And now, welcome to the Varsity Sports Show. All right, guys, it's time for the GCU Club Report, and uh, we're going to be covering some softball today. Uh, fortunately, we we have a, uh, a national champion on the uh, call with us, uh, Lindsey Collins. Uh, you may remember her from the University of Arizona, hit the uh, winning home run against uh, UCLA in the College World Series, and she is joining us. She is the head coach of the GCU Women's Club Softball Program, Coach Collins, welcome to the Varsity Sports Show. Thank you so much, and thanks for having me on. I am I am so excited to talk to you because this is our first softball game that uh, we're covering for GCU Club, and we've been um, working with uh, with GCU in this partnership. This is year number two for us, and we've covered an, an awful lot of sports, but softball is one that's that's been a little elusive with uh, the scheduling and and uh, you know where you've been, where we're at at the time, uh, and we finally are going to be at the same place at the same time, and we're catching you the weekend of your your season, essentially your season finale. Correct. It will definitely be fun. It, it caught up quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe we're already at the end of our season, but 
it's it's been a good run. So I look at your schedule, and you're sitting going into uh, this morning's uh, finales. Uh, you've got a, a triple header today against UCLA, uh, but you're sitting at ten and five. Any any particulars that stand out over the course of the season, whether it be specific opponents or specific takeaways that maybe helped you have more success after kind of making some tweaks throughout? We've had a lot less games than what we're used to. And I think kind of that quick, quick pace every weekend um, does help us. I have, my program seems to be actually stronger when we're staying active and have a, a load, like a full load schedule. Um, but still they're, they're doing very well. We started off really, really strong. Yeah. So I was proud of them on that part. Um, last weekend was not the outcome I wanted with, uh, NAU and NAU and us are usually the top two and they're our rival school, of course, since they're also in Arizona. Um, but I was very proud of the way they played. We worked hard and everything that I really wanted them to work on, they did. It's just like anything. It's those little errors that cost you a game and they're learning. I have a very young team. So I, I'm kind of I'm okay where we're at. Joined by uh, GCU Club women's softball coach Lindsey Collins here on the Varsity Sports Show. Coach Collins, what do your opponents say about you when they say when they say, "Wow, that GCU uh, team, they are blank." What do they say? We started off kind of because it was uh, club softball was still kind of new to all the colleges. So we started off as nobody really knew who we were. And my very first year, I made it to the World Series. And we got third place, and that put a name out there. And people were like, oh, GCU. Like, <laughs> first yeah. off, Grand Canyon, they, we, now because of Grand Canyon being way more predominant in Arizona, now people know, like, location, where we're at, and who we really are. Um, and now, um, I honestly think my my girls have done a great job making a name and representing the school and having opponents in a good way, they're they're scared of us. They they I have I'll have to say almost every year I've had really good talent and I've been lucky to have a good group of girls that mesh well together and they we've every season we are usually in the top two. This yeah. season is our first season where we've dropped a little bit lower and it is what it is. So season finale this weekend, you've got a triple header hosting UCLA uh 10 a.m. noon and 2 p.m. What can we expect from UCLA coming in? Um, they're they're a strong program. They've always been able to maintain good talent and give us a run for our money. Uh, where my girls are at right now, I'm confident. I'm really confident that our our pitching is our pitching is maintained throughout the season, which I'm proud of that because we have uh, one senior and um, a a freshman that has on Honestly, got stronger and stronger as the season's gone on, and then we have a, a backup uh, junior. But I also say, like, I really am confident of where we're at hitting wise and just putting it. They just need to put it all together. Sometimes you just have those moments where things just don't go your way, and I just we just need our it to go our way, and we'll, we'll be fine. When you um, okay, let's fast forward now. Uh, we are. Let's say it's Sunday, Monday, okay, a couple of days from now, uh, and you've got to start looking at, okay, we are losing this position. We're losing this player. We're losing when we're going to need to do some replacing. Um, how's the talent pool on campus? Uh, my program started off really, really strong. The pandemic killed, I think, everybody. Um, <laughs> I don't care if you were junior college, uh, big schools or not, and I've – I've gone up and down from the pandemic, but I will have to say this season we had probably 30, 30 girls come out for fall ball and tryouts. And I, I used to have around 50, Wow. Um, but GCU does not talking with other schools. I don't lack um, softball players. I always am able to have enough to even I have to make cuts sometimes for the main team. Wow. So that's that's a huge plus for me. Yeah. 
Well, it's an incredible campus. It's grown by leaps and bounds, and, and they're Christ. coming. They continue to come. So joined once again by GCU Women's Club softball coach Lindsey Collins here on the Varsity Sports Show. Uh, season finale this weekend, triple header, head out to GCU, 33rd Avenue and Camelback to the softball stadium. Three games today, 10 a.m., noon, 2 p.m. Coach, thanks so much for joining us here on the Varsity Sports Show. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you for having me. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show, AM 1060, KDUS, Arizona, Vince Delisio at Pat's Run, joined by Alex Medina, Kobe Bronstein, members of our incredible Cronkite team, and a special guest, an old friend of mine. He's, he's also a participant here today among the 30,000 strong. No, you didn't do it? I know I did not do yeah, it. But you got the shirt. I got the, sh- I got the shirt because I'm me, not because I... Oh, because you're... Okay. <laughs> Kyle Murphy, former ASU... So, well, you'll always be an ASU Sun Devil. Offensive lineman. Ni- he corrected me, 93 to 97. He, I was fortunate enough to have been here, and, and uh, I'm not going to say that I... I I'm not going to say I coached him because that would be doing an injustice to him. We worked together. We worked together, yes, yes. yes. So it, we had a lot of fun, and he <laughs> held me accountable to everything. Don't grade this guy's position test because <laughs> he will come back to you, and on the littlest thing, and I swear to God, the coaches would give me an answer key, and you would still question it as if I was an idiot half the time. Not so, as if you were an idiot. I just yeah. needed – I have control issues. Yeah, and, they, and, and, we, and we were always wrong, and he was always right, and, and it's probably to, the, to that to, – is it the same to the to this day, this very day? Uh, You're always right. His wife Kelly, uh, who's a, a rock and a saint, and is here as well. So, Kyle, thank you so much for for coming over. You don't know what it means to me to see you, to see a friendly face. Um, it, it, what does this event mean to you? Uh, I think for most of us, it's an opportunity for us to get together with, you know, the guys that we played with, or the brotherhood that we that we share, and that's really the most important part. Um, I know there's a, it's the celebration of Pat, and I think for us, we do that in our own way because of our own unique relationships with him. Um, and so you, how, you, how you honor him is, is personal to each. And then this is a way, and I wrote this yesterday, to, to bridge the gap of who he was for those who did not know him. Um, and the reach that he had. I mean, the reach that you see here and the amount of people is because of the reach that he had when he was alive. Uh, and he was interested in people. And I think that's probably one of the greatest attributes. The public knew a lot about Pat Tillman, the football player. You're talking about him as a person. Elaborate more on exactly who he was behind closed doors. I mean, he was like any of us. And I think it's easy uh, based on his legacy and you know time, to build him up to you know, a mythological figure almost. He was just one of the guys. Like he blended in. He you know he swore a lot. He he drank with the guys. He just he he was no different than us. He was just unique in who he was. Um, meaning he was he wasn't any different from any other 18 to 22 year old in terms of how he behaved and how he interacted with us. It's who he was and how he interacted with everybody that made him unique. Um, and, and he had goals of his own, and he, he had set pieces. Arizona State was going to be a set amount of time. When that time was up, he had something else he wanted to do. So you, you know, to be able to have that kind of vision when you're that young, I think is, that's what made him unique. Um, as, a, as a person, you know, he was awesome. He's just, he was an awesome guy to hang around because you could talk about anything and, you know, that subject could go from economics to philosophy to sports to, you know, whatever. Now, Kyle, um, obviously Pat Tillman was a leader. Um, being in this run and just being here today, even if you aren't participating, how does the environment feel? Um, and it's a huge day uh, in the Arizona community. So how does it feel? It's awesome. I mean, again, the more people that continue to say his name and continue to live their lives, that he inspires them to live a particular way, I think is awesome. Um, I think what becomes, there's a bittersweetness to it for us. Uh, It's, you love to see how many people he's inspired and, you know, what the day means to the state. And then you also realize that you don't have your friend. So it's, you know, that that bittersweetness can be difficult. Uh, and again, we revel 
in our time together, which helps you know heal that that piece that is missing to a degree. Murph, last question. We've got a couple of seconds left here, literally. You're a head football coach now. A lot of what you learned here as a player, has a lot of that kind of translated to what you're doing now with your kids? Absolutely. I mean, for me, the, our foundational pieces are discipline, consistency, and accountability. All things that were forged for me through my parents at the beginning, then high school football, and then the foundation was eventually set here for those things. So, absolutely. Pacifica High School in Garden Grove. Head football coach Kyle Murphy. Oh, and by the way, one of the greatest offensive linemen to walk the halls here. I'm going to say that because I've got the platform to say it. I appreciate you're, it. You're going to be in the Hall of Fame one day if, if it, it, it's, it's, it, it's going to happen. It's got to happen. I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm going to do it for you. Right. You're in. I you're in it. my Hall of Fame. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, Kyle Murphy. Guys, when we come back from the break, stick around. We're going to be joined by Las Vegas Silver Stars head football coach Kerry Walters. We are the official broadcast team for the Women's National Football Conference. We've got the Vegas game tonight. I'll be heading to Vegas after the show uh, to help with production there. Ray Fletcher, Barry Sabine. Good stuff, guys. Don't go anywhere. Live from Pat's Run. We'll be right back. Go Varsity. here for KDUS AM 1060. Check out your favorite shows and games on 100.7 KSLX HD2. APAC is your one-stop source for all your automotive and heavy-duty air conditioning parts, supplies, and equipment. They're family-owned and have been the Valley's go-to for all your auto AC needs since 1982. Whether it's for your everyday or vintage car, commercial, or off-road vehicle or equipment, APAC has you covered. Call APAC, double A-P-A-K, the AC experts at 602-254-1116 and ask for the Varsity Special to get 10% off your purchase. Coaches, the Varsity Sports Show wants to be part of your team in 2023. We have a proven track record of providing the most coverage of your teams with Thursday and Friday night football. We will spotlight your players with multi-camera game broadcasts, pre- and post-game interviews, and segments on our Saturday morning radio show. With over 100 games broadcast in 2022, we will be exceptional for your team. Call, text, or email 480-220-4629 or info at varsitysportshow.com. Hi, my name is Michael Beal from Costa Mesa, California, and I'm the only person other than Vince that got the honor of wearing his high school letterman jacket. And you're listening to the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KD, U.S. Arizona. Ready to bring KDUS AM 1060 into your home with Alexa? Hi, I'm Alexa. Download the KDUS AM 1060 skill and enable. Then say, Alexa, open the KDUS AM 1060. This is where I start my day. Who says that women can't rule the world? The Las Vegas Silver Stars of the WNFC are changing the game in women's sports. This is the Silver Spotlight. The Silver Spotlight. Now, here's Silver Stars head coach, Kerry Walters. All right, guys, it is time for the Las Vegas Silver Stars report with head coach Kerry Walters. Uh, as you all know, we are the uh, official broadcast and production team for the Las Vegas Silver Stars women's professional football team. And we are so excited uh, to be back and this year to uh, to get back into it, get back out there and, and promote this uh, amazing league and this amazing team. Coach Walters, welcome to the Varsity Sports Show. Welcome to me. Welcome to you. Thank you for having me. So you, this is week two, and it's going to be your um, your home uh, debut, of the 2024 edition of the Silver Stars. Last week you went on the road. You went down to San Diego. Didn't end uh, as uh, the way that quite that you wanted. But there's always going to be takeaways from any game. And and what are some things that maybe you took away from that game that you worked on this past week in preparation for your home opener? Uh, I think the biggest takeaway for us is that we are too nice. Um, you know, as football players, you have to have the ability to turn on your controlled aggression. Um, and, you know, we learned the hard way um, that, you know, we have to have that every single game. I think we came out with a highly effective game plan. We moved the ball. We, you know, we did the things we needed to do. We just didn't execute. Um, effectively and we certainly didn't uh, bully anyone you know we didn't really yeah. um, 
turn on that that aggression. And I think for us, the players now kind of step back and go, oh, oh, wow, we really need to bring it every single play. So that's our biggest uh, takeaway. And I think the players collectively have all kind of nodded their head like, oh, so – so hopefully okay. that's uh, our biggest takeaway. So we uh, we make it a point to to spotlight um, one of your your bright stars from uh, from the previous game, and uh, this week we're on the defensive side of the ball with uh, defensive tackle Ariana Gonzalez. Um, what were some some key points about her play in last week's game? Well, I don't know if it was intentional by the Rebellion, but she was double teamed almost every single play. Uh, but there was not a single play, if you watch the game, that she didn't perform. She she was probably our, you know, one of our most um, controlled aggression, you know, violent hands. She got in the backfield. She disrupted plays. Um, and she's on the D-line. D she's probably outweighed by, you know, a little bit of weight. So she's a smaller D-tackle, but she's fast and strong. And it was just, it was really, really um, exciting to watch her play. So as you look ahead uh, to uh, your home opener tonight, and we'll be broadcasting the game out at uh, Faith Lutheran and Summerlin, and and really excited about about debuting the the uh, the team in the uh, in their home opener. What do you see coming in with Los Angeles and their their squad? Uh, they like to run a spread offense. You know, they have um, the football sisters who we played with last year. We love them. You know, we told them at the beginning of the season that we were going to cheer for them, except for the game that they played us. So, <laughs> you know, for this game, there are enemies, there are frenemies, um, but they like to they like to pass the ball. Um, you know, they have speed on their team, so we expect them to try to air it out a little bit. Um, but we're you know we're ready. We're like I said, we learned a lot from the San Diego game as far as being aggressive and. Um, they better be on their P's and Q's. <laughs> All right, there you have it. Six o'clock tonight out at uh, Faith Lutheran High School. Come on out, anybody in the Las Vegas area within 50 miles. Get in the car. This is some really good football. And get there early because the, the stadium tends to fill up pretty fast. A um, lot, uh, lot of attention on this incredible league and this outstanding team in the, the Las Vegas Silver Stars. Head coach Kerry Walters. Coach, thanks again. Good luck tonight, and we'll see you in a few hours. All right, thank you so much. This is Angelo Scaturro from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas for Varsity Sports Show. Here's a recap of all the sports action from the 702, a.k.a. Las Vegas, Nevada. The Vegas Golden Knights have went from looking like a big-time competitor to barely holding on to a spot in the Stanley Cup playoffs. They currently have a record of 42-27-8, which tallies to 92 points. They currently hold the second wildcard spot in the Western Conference behind the Nashville Predators. The Golden Knights are now on a three-game losing streak after being defeated by Arizona, Vancouver, and Edmonton. The final four games of the VGK season will take place on their home ice at T-Mobile Arena starting Friday against the Minnesota Wild. While we wait for the Oakland Athletics move to Vegas in four years, they have found a new temporary home in Sacramento. They will play inside Sutter Health Park, which currently hosts the Sacramento Rivercats minor league team. They will remain in Sacktown until at least 2027. For Varsity Sports Show, Angelo Scatura reporting. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show. AM 1060, KDUS, Arizona, Vince Delicio, Kobe Bronstein, and Alex Medina from Pat's Run. We're in the uh, southwest corner of the end zone uh, in the breezeway near the concession stand set up in here. Nice shady area. People have been walking by. It's kind of starting to dissipate a little bit, but there were a lot of people here. We've got, we're joined, we've got a young competitor here, a young uh, race participant. His name is Colby. So we have Kobe and we have Colby. Colby. You came up here from Tucson. First of all, welcome to the Varsity Sports Show. How's the experience been for you? Is this your first one? Uh, yes, this is my first uh, Pat Tillman run. Nice. And and what what was the experience like? Was it too hot? How did it feel doing the, the competition? Um, it was exciting because I've been doing a couple, like, 5Ks with my mom, and I, like, I just like doing that with them. Awesome. And and then you guys came down here from Tucson to participate in this race. Now, what does the Pat Tillman race or mean to you guys? Um... So I've learned a little bit about Pat Tillman that um, he was for Cardinals and he was for Arizona State. So it just it means a lot that I can like be out here and kind of support that. 
And awesome. it's, it's a hot Saturday morning, but I can't help to notice that you're wearing long sleeves. What was behind that coming into the race today? Um, well, this kind of, it absorbs water, so I knew that there's going to be water out there. There you go. So and then again, forward. coming from Tucson, would you rather go to the University of Arizona for college, Arizona State, somewhere else? But is there a rivalry with a lot of the people from Tucson with Arizona State? Uh, there are. I get, I get a couple dirty looks when <laughs> I wear my Arizona State stuff. Now, are you planning on coming to Arizona State? Honestly, I don't know. I might go here, but this will be my first choice of college if I do. Yeah, you've obviously got a lot of time. Is this your first Pat Tillman race? Yeah, this is my first Pat Tillman race, and it was really awesome. So, And with how your expectations matched up with the actual experience, what was it like out there? Um, It was just a great, like, like the people out there were really awesome. They were really supportive. I just liked it a lot. I did. And you're here with your family. What was it like to have them run with you uh, in this 4.2 mile race? It was cool. I, li I, like have, I like spending time with my mom, my dad over here. So, yeah, it's awesome. Colby, now do you play any sports? Yeah, I do play a couple of sports. I play football, baseball, and basketball mostly. Awesome. There was a few uh, big football stars here today. J.J. Watt was here, Kenning Dillingham, the coach for ASU. Um, now, what does that mean to you that they're here participating in this race that you're in? That means that they really care about their players and what happens to them. And you said you've run a couple of 5Ks. This is a 4.2-mile race. Have you ran a race longer than that or a distance longer than 4.2 miles? Uh, no, this is my first, like, long distance. And did you think that you were going to get through without any adversity, or did you face some adversity during the race at all, getting tired, or were you able to finish it without a problem? I was able to finish it without a problem. I'm, I'm pretty athletic, I think. Now, Kobe, there's a lot of teamwork out there on the track today. Um, what was the environment like when you were running uh, the race? Uh, it was extremely, like, friendly. I think people were, like, glad to see, like, the youth getting out there and, like, actually doing something other than sitting on their phones. <laughs> and what was the moment like when you first crossed the finish line, obviously uh, taking some exhales after a long race? It was, it was exciting because it was like you're stepping out onto a college football field. It's really cool. I liked it. And then also you're coming from Tucson. It's about an hour and a half to two hours. Did your family get up early in the morning, or did you guys stay over in the Phoenix area? Well, we were supposed to get up early in the morning, but the alarm didn't go off, so we kind of woke up at 6 and oh rushed boy. over here. Yeah, so you got up at 6 and then somehow got over here, able to run the race. Yeah. And again, talk about your full-on experience with the Pat Tillman race and eventually finishing. Yeah, I just it was really friendly. The people in the race, on the sidelines, just cheering you on. It was really amazing. Now, Kobe, this was my first time at the race, and I've lived here for a long time, 10 years. Now, when I was driving up, there was 42 all over the streets, obviously. Now, when you were pulling up, I know that you guys were running a little bit behind, but how, how were you feeling and just seeing everybody here together? I was, it was kind of like inspiring to me because it shows that people do care about something. Awesome. And you said this is your first race. Was this your parents' first race? And if it wasn't, why did you guys want to come out to Phoenix today to run in the race? Um, it was all of our first race. Um, I think we just really just wanted to come out here and have some fun. And that's what we did. And obviously this is an idea that you planned for a little bit. Was this more something that you thought about a couple months ago or more of just this week? And you said, hey, I want to get up with my family to go run in the Pat Tillman race. Um, it was a couple months ago um, because... We heard about it, um, and we were just we said that we wanted to do that because it sounded really fun. Awesome. And then now after coming to this race today, do you plan on coming back? I do. This race is amazing, and I would love to come back. Yeah, we're joined with Colby. Would you ever consider running cross-country at all? And it, you said it's a little bit of a hobby, but is it more of a hobby as opposed to something that you want to compete at? I mean, not really cross-country, but maybe like the short distances. Track and field. Yeah, track so and field. Track yeah. and field could be the sport for Colby. You say you play football, and what other sports do you play? Uh, baseball and basketball. Nice. And what would you say you like the most out of all those that you play? It's either football or baseball. Football or baseball. I know you're in eighth grade. What high school are you going to next year? I'm going to Canyon Del, Canyon Del Oro. Canyon Del Oro High School, 14-year-old Kobe. Thanks for joining us in the Varsity Sports Show. Yeah, it's no problem. Thanks, so, Kobe. Yep, yeah, no problem. We're going to head to a break in the Varsity Sports Show, followed up by a couple of segments. Don't go anywhere on the Varsity Sports Show.
need social information about KDUS AM 1060, try KDUS 1060.com at KDUS AM 1060 on Twitter and Facebook.com slash KDUS AM 1060. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe. With an experience so good it remains indescribable. With something for every seafood lover. Try one of their amazing custom seafood boils, sandwiches, appetizers, and salads. Angry Crab Shack Tempe is located east of I-10 on Warner Road. 480-674-3847. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe. Come ready to eat. Hi, this is former NBA All-Star and coach Doug Collins, and you're listening to the home of youth, high school, college, and you, the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. Hi, this is Rob Maggs, Vince's life coach and surfing coach to the Beach Bum Beal. You're listening live to the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KDUS. Your caddy, Ray Adams, takes you beyond the 18th hole on Saturday mornings with Great American Golf from 6 to 7 a.m. on KDUS AM 1060. This is Adam Small with Varsity Sports reporting on the Midwest. In the NBA, Giannis Antetokounmpo of the Milwaukee Bucks will miss the remainder of the NBA season after an MRI confirmed an initial diagnosis that the two-time MVP has a strained left calf. The injury occurred in the third quarter of the Bucks' 104-91 victory against the Boston Celtics. Also in the NBA, Minnesota Timberwolves' Anthony Edwards scored a career-high 51 points as the Timberwolves overcame an early 21-point deficit with the dominant second half over the Washington Wizards. Edwards credited coach Chris Finch for keeping him focused ahead of the matchup with one of the worst teams in the league. In baseball, Chicago White Sox third baseman Yoan Moncada will miss at least three months and could miss up to six months after suffering a left adductor strain, the team announced Wednesday. He was added to the injury list, and outfielder Oscar Colas was recalled from AAA. Mankata, 28 now, injured himself running to first base during Tuesday's victory against the Cleveland Guardians, having dealt with a nagging injury in the same area for a few days leading into the game. Both Josh Naylor and Bo Naylor, younger brother of the Guardians, celebrated National Siblings Day by hitting a home run in the same inning against the White Sox on Wednesday afternoon. Lastly, in college basketball, Purdue fell short in the national championship game against UConn, Staying with the Huskies the first 18 minutes, but couldn't keep up the rest of the way. The Huskies applied pressure on all fronts. Zach Eady, Purdue's career leader in points, rebounds, had 37 and 10. Braden Smith added 12 points and 8 assists, but the rest of the team couldn't score more than 11. This was Purdue's lowest scoring output of the season, and they lost in the championship game. This is Adam Small with Varsity Sports, reporting on the Midwest. What's up, everybody? It's Seth Cordich reporting out of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas for the Varsity Sports Show. And this week, we're talking about the Chicago Bulls and this year's NBA playoffs. The Bulls are dancing on the playoff line yet again this year. Last year, they battled their way through the play-in tournament as a 10th seed, beating Toronto, the 9th seed, to play against the Miami Heat. However, they came up short in the second game to make the playoffs as the 8th seed. The Heat went on last year as the AC to make the NBA Finals, ultimately losing 4-1 against the Denver Nuggets. This just shows making the playoffs as the 8th seed doesn't rule you out, but just makes the road harder for you just a little bit more. The Chicago Bulls this year could do the same. So far they have clinched the play-in spot and are projected as the 9th seed, and are projected to play the Atlanta Hawks on Tuesday, April 16th. The winner of that game will face off against the loser of the 7th and 8th seed, which is a very, very tight race between Miami, Philly, and possibly Indiana. This all depends on the final few games of the season, as each team is within one win of each other. The 
Bulls, if they make it out, will be the eighth seed facing off against the number one seed, the Boston Celtics. Tune in April 16th through the 19th for the chance to see the Chicago Bulls start a legendary postseason run. Reporting out of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, I'm Seth Cordich, and I'll see you next time. This is Ella Walter Sanchez from Arcadia High School reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. With March Madness giving women's sports the spotlight it deserves and bringing women athletes front and center, I wanted to highlight a unique business in the Midwest. A bar of their own is located in Minneapolis and exclusively plays women's sports all the time. A bar of their own is the first sports bar dedicated exclusively to women's sports. Their owner, Jillian Hiscock, stated in their mission statement that their business started when her and some friends went to a bar to watch the University of Minnesota softball team play in the national tournament and not one of the 20 TVs had the game playing. These girls were playing on a national level and yet not a single person was playing it. Rather, cornhole and football were being broadcast. Not only were they upset by the lack of representation on TV, but also the lack of variety and accommodations dietary-wise. So, Hiscock and her friends set to making a sports bar that is inclusive, family-friendly, and for women sports fans of all ages. As we are seeing, a big issue with young girls in today's age is that they don't lack the resources, they lack the confidence to be able to prosper. Sports allow girls to have higher level of confidence, self-esteem, and overall, better mental health. A bar of their own not only creates an inclusive community in their bar, but outside as well. The owners of a bar of their own also started a fund of their own, which supports local females getting into playing sports. The money goes to sponsor teams in the Twin City area so that they have proper equipment, training, and more. Women's sports are growing the attention they deserve, and it's through programs like these they are fueled, and women young and old around the country are shown that they can too. You can visit a bar of their own next time you're in Minneapolis, but until then, make sure to follow them on Instagram at a bar of their own. For the Varsity Sports Show, this is Ella Walter Sanchez. Till next time. The Midwest Report. We are back with the Varsity Sports Show. I am Alexandra Medina, and we are joined by Anthony Remedios. Uh, Anthony, you were covering the Pat Tillman race today. What is the most memorable thing that you're going to go home with? The most memorable thing is just how many different people are here participating in this event. The biggest thing that stood out to me, you know, we had ASU athletes and first responders as well. Uh, Cardinals head coach Jonathan Gannon, ASU football head coach Kenny Dillingham. So just the wide range of people that participate in this event. And again, you're working for Cronkite News and the Sports Bureau. You said that you really want to hone in on the first responders. So what's going to go into the story that you're going to create? Just kind of talking about their, you know, why they come to do it. And uh, one of them uh, brought their daughter, uh, brought, sorry, brought his nine-year-old daughter along. And so kind of uh, narrowing in on that connection as well, kind of that father-daughter experience. Now, Anthony, I know you are not from Arizona, but coming into this race, what were your biggest thoughts? It's an event that, you know, before I moved here to Arizona four years ago for college, didn't really know much about, but over the course of, you know, in that time, learned a lot about and actually really wish I had participated, and that's uh, something I'm hoping to do next year. Pat Tillman is a big name nationwide. What did the name Pat Tillman mean to you heading into today and now being a part of the event? Just the sacrifice, you know, this is the ultimate sacrifice, a guy who put his, you know, turned away big money in the NFL to go serve for our country, and um, ultimately what happened to him is um, it's a tragedy, but uh, you know, to be able to carry on his legacy through an event like Pat's Run and through his foundation. Now, being on the field with a lot of participants of the race, what did you notice about the environment and just the attitude that was taking place? It's just a big, you know, fun event for everybody, and you know, there's no pressure to have to run the whole time or hit a certain time. You can walk it, you can run it, anything in between and so um, just a, a fun event for everybody to uh, to come together and and celebrate a great man great man and just a last question what were your conversations like when you were talking to these first responders it's incredible what they do in their job and then coming here with their families and running in the race just how much respect they have for him and how much the legacy and his story means to them and being able to 
come back here year after year and carry on that legacy. Anthony, you were hanging around the radio booth for the last 20, 30 minutes or so. We're glad that we got you on. He's a varsity. Well, he's a, yeah, he's, a, he's an alum of our program. He was a that. fine intern broadcaster. He's very talented, also did some technical directing. You've got a bright future in this business. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for having me, and good luck to all you mm -hmm. guys as well. Great to be back. Absolutely. Anthony Remedios was with the Varsity Sports Show in 2022. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us. And with that, next we have a segment we're going to go into an interview that Vince did with ASU women's lacrosse head coach Taryn Van Thuff. Don't go anywhere on the Varsity Sports Show. It's time for Sun Devil Lacrosse Talk with ASU lacrosse coach Taryn Van Thoft on the Varsity Sports Show. AM 1060, KDUS, Arizona. All right, guys, it is that time for the ASU women's lacrosse report with Coach Taryn Van Thoft. Coach, tough one yesterday. You got a road trip in Colorado. You got a chance, a shot at some redemption tomorrow uh, versus Denver. But first things first, let's talk a little bit about the uh, Colorado Buffaloes. Give us a kind of a recap. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. Um, you know, we, we got out to a, heart, a hot start, um, really, you know, kind of, Kickstarted with a couple of goals early and just some some mental errors and some turnovers kind of started to dwell on us a little bit. And we kind of took a backseat rather than that, you know, gas pedal ignite. Um, and so it was then a 50-50 game through, throughout. Um, obviously, a final score ended up being a little bit larger gap than, you know, what I think the game in the pace of the game indicated, but yeah. you know, we've got another opportunity versus Denver on, um, on Sunday. A little bit of optimism in that you've got some underclassmen stepping up and one of those in particular, uh, freshman Anna Viglione, uh, talk a little bit about her play in, uh, in Friday's game. Yeah. You know, Anna's been running the midfield for us. Um, so you've been seeing her up and down the field and pretty consistent in her defensive play and giving us some offensive efforts, but um, in, you know, in the match, against Colorado, she stepped up in the second half to take the draws for us and ended up, you know, gaining a ton of possession for us time and time, time and time again to, you know, give us opportunity on the offensive side of the ball. As you look ahead to Denver, um, what are some takeaways from, from Colorado that were, were good, uh, some positives that you hope to, to kind of apply toward what's happening in Sunday's match? Yeah, you know, I think offensively, we shared the ball really well. Seven different goal scorers um, was awesome. I think seven out of 12 of our goals were assisted. So we were moving that ball and we're sharing the wealth um, across the board. We're going to need to continue to do that to find success against a, a tough, a tough Denver zone. But, um, you know, from the defensive side of things, just really cleaning up our two man and our communication. Um, we saw, you know, what worked and what didn't work, but there's a lot to clean up there and they know, you know, kind of the, the small minute details that they can freshen up on. Uh, this is kind of an, of, uh an offhanded remark, Coach, a question for you. It, and this isn't anything we talked about in advance, but I was just curious. Can you – do you notice a difference with the elevation and the conditioning? <laughs> you know, we run we run three midfield lines, so I do feel like we're staying pretty fresh. Um, it's just nature of, you know, how many people we run. But, of course, you know, there's always going to be – anywhere you go different, it's always going to be a little bit different. Now, we got out here in practice the day before we hit Colorado, so – We've adjusted a little bit, and it'll get, certainly be adjusted by tomorrow's um, match with Denver, but we're ready to roll. All right, Coach Taryn Van Thoff, ASU Sun Devils women's lacrosse out in the Mile High City. Coach, good luck tomorrow versus Denver. Well, thank you. Forks up. All right, we are back here with the Varsity Sports Show. I am Alexandra Medina, and... Breaking news, we just heard that Heinz Ward is going to be hired as ASU's wide receiver football coach. Now, it's been a, it's been a long ride uh, this last season for ASU um, with the hiring of new football coach Kenny Dillingham. Um, Heinz Ward is a huge name in the football world. Um, he played with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he has not made the Hall of Fame, but he has been eligible for eight years now. Kobe, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, he went to the University of Georgia, obviously had a storied career in a Super Bowl victory with the Pittsburgh Steelers in a very long career, and he's been on Hall of Fame ballots a lot of the last couple years that he's been eligible, and he's certainly going to boost that wide receiver core in terms of all the knowledge and experience that he's had, and that's exactly what this ASU football team needs, especially after not necessarily a season to remember in year one, but it all started before that, obviously, with the announcement that they were bowl ineligible, um, but the team didn't have a great record in general, so it wasn't like they were in a position to be bowl ineligible. 
uh, or bowl eligible rather. But um, it started off not great. But again, bringing a very experienced veteran in Heinz Ward with a ton of coaching experience. He was just an XFL coach. He was just an XL, uh, XFL head coach. And now he's coming over as the wide receiver coach. And I think he's going to be great ad for uh, their coaching staff. Yeah, and uh, Kenny Dillingham, he he just came on to the staff not too long ago, and he's done some good for ASU. And now with the hiring of Heinz Ward, um, we're really going to see what the Sun Devils can do. And um, obviously today we're at the Mountain America Stadium, and so the environment with the hiring of Heinz Ward is adding to this awesome ex like environment that's already here. Heinz Ward, the new ASU Sun Devil wide receiver coach. And with that, we're going to head into some more segments, the East Coast Report with David Lopez, Alyssa Firestone with the Boston Celtics news, and Nash Dara to follow talking about New England lacrosse. Don't go anywhere. Head to a break on the Varsity Sports Show. downloaded the KDUS AM 1060 skill for Alexa yet? Dude. Alexa is frustrated. No matter how many times do you ask, the answer is mail. Chicken. Once you're ready, say Alexa. Open KDUS AM 1060 to listen to your favorite shows. This is Conrad Hamilton, head football coach at Desert Mount High School. You are listening to the Varsity Sports Show. The Varsity Sports Show is once again proud to partner with Grand Canyon University Club Sports in 2023 and 24. Join us in our coverage of GCU Club Sports on Saturday's Varsity Sports Show and the rest of the week. We'll cover hockey, soccer, baseball, rugby, lacrosse, and more. The Lopes are back on the Varsity Sports Show. Hi, this is Mesa Community College Assistant Athletic Director Mike Lavella and Modern Day Invincible. You're listening to AM1060, the Varsity Sports Show, the home of all your junior college sports coverage. The Varsity Sports Show, live with Vince D'Alessio, every Saturday morning from 9 to 11 a.m. Features all the local youth, high school, college sports, and more, both around the valley and beyond. Enjoy go-to segments with coaches and players from around the valley. Tune in to the Varsity Sports Show with Vince and Guest, Saturday morning from 9 to 11 a.m. Right here on KTUS AM 1060. Online at KTUS1060.com and the KTUS 1060 app. We'll do what's best for the team and we'll do what's best for you. The Rich Eisen Show, coming to you weekdays from 3 to 5 p.m. Here on KTUS AM 1060 and KTUS1060.com. The East Coast Report. Hey everybody, I'm David Lopez from the University of Florida and today we're talking about the upcoming NBA playoffs. But I want to focus on one team that always seems to find magic in a bottle at this time of year, the Miami Heat. The question is, can Jimmy Butler and the Heat shock the world again? Miami currently sits at 44 and 36, eighth place in the East and a very underwhelming season so far for Eric Spolstra's team. Many people thought the Heat found their piece to elevate them to championship contenders after a deadline trade for Terry Rozier, but the Heat have had a losing record since acquiring Rozier, who has only averaged 16 points per game. Dealing with injuries, inconsistency, and one of the worst offenses in the league, Miami seems destined for a first round or maybe even a play-in exit. However, if there's one thing we've learned from Miami, and especially Jimmy Butler, the regular season is not the same thing as the playoffs. There's 2020 when Butler took the fifth seed heat to the finals and had a 40-point triple-double against LeBron and the Lakers. Or in 2022 when Butler scored 47 points in Game 6 in Boston to force a Game 7 in the Eastern Conference Finals. Or just last season when Butler dominated the Bucks, Knicks, and Celtics en route to making the Heat the second ever eight seed to reach the finals. Although the Heat always seem to find a way come playoff time, they do come into this year's edition with likely their toughest path of any previous playoff run. As of now, the Heat are set to play a play-in game in Philadelphia against a solid Sixers team that just got back former MVP Joel Embiid. 
If they win that game, Miami will be the seventh seed and take on Giannis, Damian Lillard, and Milwaukee. And if the Heat lose in Philadelphia, but make the play-in spot as an eighth seed, they face the NBA's best team, the Boston Celtics. With new stars coming into play this year like Rozier, Jaime Hakas Jr., and Nikola Jovic, while hopefully having Tyler Harrow healthy for the playoffs, Eric Spolstra believes his team has the talent to make another run. It won't be easy no matter what, but we know for sure you cannot count out Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat to find another miracle this postseason. Once again, I'm David Lopez from the University of Florida, and you're listening to the Varsity Sports Show. Good morning. This is Alyssa Firestone from Arizona State University reporting with the Varsity Sports Show, coming to you with some big news in regards to the Boston Celtics. The 62-17 Celtics, holding the best record in the Eastern Conference, are looking to keep their starting five for quite some time. That being said, it was announced by ESPN this week that the two-time NBA star and five-time All-Defensive teamer, Jeru Holiday, declined his $37.3 million player option, agreeing to a new four-year $135 million contract extension to continue with the Celtics through the 2027-2028 season. This extension will keep together the starting five consisting of Holiday, alongside Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Kristaps Porzingis, and Derek White. Holiday will now become the fourth player ever to sign a deal with more than $100 million at age 33 or older. For other basketball content and other sports coverage, make sure to tune in to the Varsity Sports Show. For Varsity Sports, I have been Alyssa Firestone reporting. This is the Varsity Sports Show, and you are listening to Nash Dara from Arizona State University talk about some lacrosse in the Northeast. The sport of lacrosse over the years has grown significantly, especially in the Northeast where we see the sport has grown the most to help the spread of lacrosse over the entire United States. The sport of lacrosse dates back to the time of the Native Americans, a sport that originated in Canada and the Northeastern and Mid-Atlantic parts of the United States. The game has grown to become the national sport of Canada and has seen maximum popularity and growth within the United States. Just five years ago, we saw the inaugural season of the Premier Lacrosse League. The sport has been one of, if not the most highly growing sports across North America, with NCAA college lacrosse also picking up and catching up to the other four big sports across the country. But the competitive play has to start somewhere, and we primarily see that in the beginning of the Northeast. One thing that points to this is high school lacrosse in the Northeast is home to the most skilled and prominent teams across the nation. Out of just nine states, eight of the top 25 team come from the Northeast including the number one ranked team in high school lacrosse in the nation. And that team is the Lawrenceville School Big Reds based out of New Jersey. In still an early season, the team is 8-0, but one thing to point out is that last year this team went 12-0, which put them as the fourth best ranked team in the nation. The team has not lost a game since May 22nd of 2022. Along with Lawrenceville, there are three other teams in the top 10 and four others in the nation in the top 25. Those teams are the top 10 is Malvern Prep from Pennsylvania, ranked 4th. The 6th ranked team is the Bullish Bulldogs out of Maryland, as well as the 10th ranked Lakers from the Boys Latin School in Baltimore. Thanks to the Northeast, lacrosse is a sport that we are going to see continue to grow for a long time. The sport is coming up on nearly a million players in the nation to play at all four levels of the sport. I think we could see within the next decade the sport to be as big as some of the other four major sports in America. With all that being said, I'm Nash Dara, and this is the Varsity Sports Show. The East Coast Report. Time for Vince's final word. All right, so just like that, another show comes and goes. And uh, we've, we've been out all morning. We've been to Pat's Run here at uh, Mountain America Stadium. It'll always be Sun Devil Stadium to me, but... Um, their Mountain America's pockets are a little deeper than mine, so they named it after their, their organization. But anyway, that being said, Vince Delisio here, joined by uh, Kobe Bronstein and Alex Medina here on the south side of Sun Devil Stadium. Uh, what a show. Look, everybody's gone now. Isn't that something? Kobe, I mean, what, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, when I went on the football field and I did some interviews, which yeah. are now up on our social media pages for the Varsity Media Show, a sea of people again all at the same goal that you needed unity rather yeah. and togetherness of everybody in the same goal representing the same man honoring pat tillman it was really a sight to see alex yeah vince i said many times today today is a huge day for the state of arizona and the community coming together to honor pat tillman a former sun devil and cardinals player who who put his life 
on the line and gave it his all for this country. I, uh, and, and I'm grateful for the people that did stop. You Sun Devil alums that came by, uh, it's, a, it's a real fraternity, a brotherhood. And then uh, just the random people that, that came and sat down and we put headsets on them. Because I wanted to get their perspective. We wanted to hear from them and see what they thought of the event. And, and the message was, was all the same. It was a consistent message of unity, of helping one another, um, and of, uh, of just doing the right thing for mankind and charity, and which leads me to um, some somber news. Uh, this week was, was a very rough week for us here at the Varsity Sports Show in that we lost somebody very close to us, and, and our number one fan right now, Rob Maggs, is listening. Uh, so, Rob, thank you um, for, for your friendship, but uh, we lost um, Mike Beal, and Mike Beal, who... Uh, as you guys remember, the past three, four, four years has uh, uh, been uh, the mastermind behind the Beach and with Beal Southern California Surf Report. We grew up together. He was a real life person, and uh, he was the best friend in the world. He was a brother, um, and and he was very selfless. Always gave of his time, and 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 loved practical jokes, and never took life too seriously, and always took care of people around him, even if he didn't know you. Uh, he always took, took care of you, and, um, and we lost him this week. And Mike uh, uh, was 53 years old, um, and it was, uh, it was not sudden. He had been, uh, uh, he'd been ill, but uh, um, he even we did a segment. Our last segment was March 16th, and, and he participated in that. And he was somebody that was very near and dear to our show, and we lost him way too young. So, Mike, um, miss you, buddy, and thank you so much for for your friendship. Um, I think as time goes on, you know, you, you never forget the memories of people that touched your life uh, and, and were good friends to you. And Mike and I go back at, at a core group of us many, many years, over 40 years. Um, and um, uh, you'll always have those memories to carry with you. And you're, you know, every time I look at my phone, uh, when I think of something funny, I'd call him or I'd text him or he'd text me and we'd call each other names. And and uh, I can't do that anymore. And, um, and, and the dynamics of our show will probably change a little bit. Um, but he's a, he's a special person, and, and he's a good friend, and he's a brother. Um, we may do something. We may do something to honor him. So stay tuned for that. Um, everybody that's been supportive, uh, thank you. And Mike leaves behind his wife, Kenny, uh, and uh, his kids, Clay and Claire. Clay will be graduating from uh, W.P. Carey uh, School here next week, no, in a couple of weeks, and uh, Claire is currently studying at the University of Indiana in Bloomington. So uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to his family, uh, extended family and friends. And um, on behalf of the Varsity Sports Show, thank you everyone for tuning in. Thanks to today's guests, uh, Coach Mike Jacobs from Thunderbird High School Baseball, um, uh, Coach Joe Mickey from Saguaro Sabercat Baseball, all of the amazing guests that we feature. You guys, I am so proud of how you picked up the ball and ran with it and, and did a great job hosting the show. Kobe, uh, Alex, our in-studio producer, Mr. Aaron Decker, the best in the business. Um, I can't thank everyone enough for the support. Tonight we will be in Las Vegas for the Las Vegas Silver Stars WNFC. Look at our, uh, stay tuned on our, our social media, at Varsity Show on Twitter uh, or Varsity Sports Show on every other uh, platform, and we'll have links posted to tonight's game. Thanks again to my family, to my friends, and, and uh, to um, my friends are my family. And thank you to our listeners here at the Varsity Sports Show. Tune in tomorrow morning. Our ESPN show in Houston will be running, 97.5, 9 to 10 a.m. Central Time. Everyone have a great day. Take care of each other. We don't know how long we're on this earth, and we got to make the best of it and be good to each other. Go Varsity. Vince out. Hey, listeners, Vince Delisio here from the Varsity Sports Show. We are so excited and honored that you start your weekends off with us. Our team is comprised of very talented high school and college students working toward a future in media. We appreciate your support, and any opportunities that we can to promote your teams or businesses will go a long way toward helping us continue supporting our talented team. We are a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization, and we use our platform to not only promote all of the great things happening in the world of sports locally and nationally, 
but also continue to promote and encourage future broadcasters as they grow in this industry. Please consider a tax-deductible donation to the Varsity Media Foundation. To find out more, please email us at info at varsitysportshow.com or check us out on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok at Varsity Sports Show or on Twitter at Varsity Show. Once again, thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now a nationally syndicated program on the SportsMap Radio Network. Thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show, where our mission is to empower education and enable dreams, creating an unmatched platform to showcase talent both in front of and behind the microphone in radio, television, podcast, and live streaming. The Varsity Sports Show, still your home for youth, high school, college, and you in Arizona and beyond. AM 1060 KDUS Tempe Phoenix and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale Phoenix. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard this Air France radio message. Craving an unforgettable destination where culture, history, architecture, romance, and sweet macaron all meet? 